This is an example of using a game class inside of Pygame to represent your entire game. Up front, this is a more complex method of doing things, but in the long run, with a large game, it makes things easier and has the added benefit that it makes it really easy to keep your code organized and to do a game over and restart the game after it's over. The game itself looks something like this if I go ahead and run it. I'm collecting blocks similar to another example that we did before. I pull in all 50 blocks after collecting them and then once I collect all those 50 blocks the game will be over and I can restart the game rather easily. Game over, click to restart. I click, now the game restarts. Without using the game class, restarting the game is a bit more complex, particularly if you're using evil global variables or something similar. All right, to begin with, I import pi game and random, nothing terribly new there. I've got global constants going on here. These are numbers that don't normally change. In other examples, you've you've seen me do, I actually use lowercase and regular variable names. Technically, constants, that is variables that aren't supposed to change, which kind of gets away from the variable name, I realize, should be in all uppercase. It makes it easy to figure out which variables represent unchanging values. And in this case, all uppercase, I'm setting black, white, green, and red. I'm not gonna redefine those. and I'm not gonna redefine how large my screen is. All right, scrolling down. This is my block class. There's not really anything different with a block class than the prior collect sprites example. Again, scrolling down, here I have the player. There really is not anything new with the player class. I've got an init, I've got an update that grabs the mouse position right here in order to move the player onto the screen. Nothing new there. The new stuff starts down below. I have a game class and I have particular game attributes. This represents one run of my game. Everything that I had before as global variables that had data that represented my game, I put as an attribute to the game class. In this case, I've got my list of sprites, a list of all the blocks, a list of all the sprites together, the player, and I also have something that's not a sprite, a game over variable that I'll set to true or false depending if the game is over. And I keep track of the score. These are done as attributes for the game class. Next up, I've got an init. Scroll down. The init, in this case, does everything that I used to do right before my main game loop. I'm setting the score to zero. I'm telling it that the game isn't over yet. I create a brand new set of block list and the all sprites list. I go ahead and create all those different sprites just like I did before but this time it's in the init of the game class and I create the player. Do note that I have a whole lot of self dot self dot in front of all of these that I didn't have before to signify that this is part of the game classes attributes and not just a local variable inside the init function. This is pretty new. Next up, scrolling down, I've got three main functions. You'll note that I've got process events. My main process event loop is all inside of this function. And I return a true if I want the window to completely close. This is how I signify to the game event loop down below that I want to close the window. Also of importance is this right here. If the user clicks the mouse button while the game is flagged as being over, I go ahead and rerun the init, that is the constructor for this. And when I rerun it, it will reset up the entire game, create all brand new lists, and easily allow me to restart my game. Not something I could do before I had this game loop. And usually I'll just return a false, meaning don't close this window. Scrolling down, I've got my run logic. This is all the logic of moving the sprites. So as long as the game's not over, that is, if the game's over, I'm not going to do any of this. I'm going to update all the sprites, do the collides. If I collide, I update my score. 
if the length of the block list is zero, the game is over, and I set this Boolean variable to true. Going down, this is the display frame. Everything about drawing my game is right here. If I fill the screen with white, if the game is over, and only if the game is over, I do this. The math in here, I take a look at the screen width, divide it by two, and the half of the text width. All of this allows me to center this text right here. Game over, click to restart. So this will center it, plop it in the screen if the game is over. If the game is not over, I draw all the sprites, and I'm done. You could also do if game over, and some people would really like instead to see an else right here. Personally, I don't like it quite as much, even though it would be slightly more efficient, because I don't think that an else is quite as explanatory as if the game is not over, do this. It's personal preference. And of course, at the end, we flip and show everything. Next up, we've got the main event loop. In this case, I still have everything that I had before for setting up the window. But what's different is right here, the game I create an instance of the game class. This sets up everything with the game. Next up, down here, I process all the events first. So this goes up to that main process loop where I process the keystroke or any sort of mouse click, that type of thing. I do the logic for moving all of the sprites. And I display the frame and then I put in my pause. Really simple game loop. And it's nice because I've pulled out all that logic into the game class. If by any chance the game process events returns a true, remember I return a true if the quit is selected. That'll go into done. Done will be true. I'll drop out of that loop and I'll run pygame quit right here. That's about it.